And now, I invite our speaker for this morning. She is the mother of our lovely and talented Anna Bethune, who is currently away at college. She is trained in information technology and in project management, and she's currently a freelance consultant in these areas. She's also a hobby landscape artist and is currently undertaking a hobby in photography. She is also a member of our temple's Ministry of Environment. So please help me invite our lovely Doreen Mallet. Thank you, Zoe. Thank you, Zoe. Um, there are, thank you again, there are two speakers uh, to proceed and they are, um, oh you're not hearing? Okay. I'm not used to this. Okay, so there are three things that are going to precede the talk and one is the uh, power talk by Zari and there are two speakers a mother, grandmother, Noel Chisholm, and Cassandra Scott, who is a mother in the making. Um, so, can we have those first, please? Noel? Are you first? Noel? Oh, Noel first, okay. Yes, of course. <laughs> Good morning, friends. Good morning. Happy Mother's Day. <laughs> Years ago, I was dragged up here by Reverend John to speak of my experience of motherhood. You know Reverend John. He can always get you to do things which you think you can't do. And so I was up here. I never thought at the time, he was not the reverend at that time, you know, he just got things done in the church. <laughs> um, never thought at that time that one day I would be standing at this same podium talking about the joys of being a grandmother. The time has gone by so quickly. Where did the time go? I'm, I still feel like 16. I might, I might, not, I, I might not look it, but um, I'm feeling like that. I've been a grandmother now for three weeks and three days. <laughs> it is a wonderful feeling, a wonderful feeling. I'm so grateful. I give thanks for bringing my beautiful, for God. I give thanks to God for bringing my beautiful daughter-in-law, Safia, and my son, Andre, into my life. I am truly blessed. I'm just basking in the joy this granny status has brought me. I am in love big time. I'm literally floating on air, loving everything inside. I won't tell you the little stupidness that I've been doing since I've become a grandmother. I offered a man at the public service a, a, a shelter under my umbrella. Can you imagine that? My heart really is full and overflowing with the joy, the happiness, that my grandson Joshua is bringing me. You have to be careful how you set your goals, you know. You must be ready to receive when God pours his blessing on you because it comes in abundance. I just wanted to be happy. That was my goal. And although my happiness should not depend on any person or thing, I'm sure that God meant for this grandson to contribute to my happiness. Wonderful things have happened to me because of what I have learned at this temple. I have learned to forgive myself and others, to let go and let God, to love unconditionally. The teachings of the temple, this center for spiritual living, has prepared me to be the greatest grandmother of the century. <laughs> I will let Joshua know that it is okay to be himself, no matter what that self, whatever that self may be. 
that he is loved unconditionally and he should love unconditionally. There will be no chicken Mary Hawk then here told to my grandson. He will know it is God's wish that he should love, be happy, and enjoy this wonderful gift of life. I will let him know, as his father was taught here at the temple, that there is nothing he cannot achieve. As long as he can conceive it and believe it, the whole universe will be behind him. That this mighty power and presence within, within him, this God, knows no obstacles. He will know how blessed he is and that he should give thanks for everything in his life. I will let him know that he is God's perfect creation and that God expresses through him. So friends, if you should see him running down the aisles and getting on Reverend John's last nerve, <laughs> remember that it is not Joshua disturbing the service. It is God expressing. <laughs> Thank you. Will Cassandra come forward, please? Uh -huh. Good morning, everyone. Happy Mother's Day. Uh, this is how the temple looks from this side, OK. Ah, <laughs> uh, you know. Reverend John asked me to, you know, just do a quick little thing on the joy and, and um, gratitude of being a first-time mother or an expectant mom. And this is what I realized just this morning. I realized that I had taken mothers and motherhood for granted. I, I really had to call my mother this morning to told her, you know, how much I've taken her for granted. You know, you just believe that <laughs> the things that they do, it's just their responsibility and they should. And what I've come to realize is that motherhood is really a gift. It's a, it's a miracle. I believe it's the greatest blessing that God has bestowed on me so far. I, I am filled with joy and gratitude for the fact that divine love could have chosen me as a channel, as a vehicle to to, 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 to bring life here where it can express more of itself. And, you know, I'm humbled by that. You know, as, as this child grows inside of me and as I, as, I, as I care for it and nurture it, I realize that it's not just a child that I have grown. I realize that I've been entrusted with a life. I've been entrusted with the responsibility of raising and growing this child in truth and having it you know, really realize the, the, the potential, or should I say, having divine man really be fully expressed, and I've been given that responsibility, and I've, I'm really, really grateful for that. I, the, the only regret I really have is that I was hoping it would have taken, you know, two months or three months. I'm, <laughs> It's just taking a long time to look into the, into the eyes of God. I, I, I can't wait to, to, to meet this child. I can't wait to. I know that this child is perfect, whole, complete. I know it's the perfect expression of love. I know that planted within it is the seed of its purpose, its mission, what it's coming here to do. And I know what my responsibility and the responsibility of the temple is to help me to guide and grow that child in truth so that it can be fully expressed. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm 40 weeks is a long time, right, mother? <laughs> <laughs> you know, and being a part of this spiritual community, let's say it takes a whole community to grow a child, right? And I think the timing is perfect because I, I am happy to be here. I'm happy to know. I'm very, very grateful that I'm a part of this spiritual community because it's really a blessing to know that this child will be guided in truth from day one. That this child, 
I don't know, Reverend John, this pitney is going to be running down the aisle because I don't know. I feel as if based on what I have learned here where we learn to be fully expressed, where we learn that there are no limitations, where we learn that we can be all that we can be, I've often wondered, how am I going to grow this child? Do I say, don't do that? I, I don't know. So I'm taking this child here, and all you're going to have, me, have to help me grow him. <laughs> Because I don't want to instill any limitations. I want him to be always guided in truth. I want him to be free. I want him to, to, to just realize his God potential and everything that he came here for. So thank you, family. It is a joy, and I'm very, very happy to be an expected mom. OK, now. We are ready for our power talk? Yes. Sorry. <laughs> good morning, everyone, and a very, and a very special good morning. Um, a very happy Mother's Day to all the mothers in our temple, especially to Phaedra. <laughs> OK. My power talk on this beautiful Mother's Day is about how my mother has helped me to grow. The other day, while chilling in my bedroom with my mom, she got a phone call. I'm not exactly sure what the call was about, but the person on the other end asked her to write something down. So as she went through all the clutter on my desk, she found a notepad that I've had since about grade one or so. <laughs> as she flipped open the notepad, looking for a page to write on, there on the first page was a note I had written to myself. Remember, this was from grade one, so I was about four or five. The note read, to help mom, stuff her mouth with chocolate cake while she cries. And <laughs> cries is spelled C-R-Y-S. <laughs> After having a pretty good laugh, she showed it to Zoe and I, and of course, we had a pretty good laugh too. Upon reflection, I realized that what made me write that note to myself at four or five was compassion, caring, and love. Sharing my mom's life experiences taught me about love, to feel for other, others, and to be compassionate. Now, as a teen, I know myself to be understanding of others in difficult times, my friends, peers at school, and of course, my family. I also learned from my experiences with my mom that no matter what, through, through any difficulty, I just have to keep trying, be strong, and just know that everything is going to work out. This is probably the best gift she has given to Zoe and I. Of course, her, her source of this kind of strength and knowing is from the teachings of the temple. Being a temple baby, as Uncle John likes to call us, and growing up in this church, I know for sure that God is everything, in everything, and everything that happens is God in expression. This gives me the confidence of knowing that everything will work out just the way it needs to. If you know my mom, you probably know her as someone who is always sweet and pleasant and soft-spoken. Yes, she is all that, but believe it or not, she is also very, very stern with us. And yet she is crazy, happy, fun, laughter, and tears with us all at the same time. We can talk to her about anything and know that first of all comes the love and then the sternness. And then, of course, the long, long lectures. <laughs> <laughs> However, the way she is with us has definitely taught me a taught me that balance is always necessary and always possible. Therefore, even as a teen, I can be a diligent yet happy and involved student all at the same time. The final thing I will share about my mom has, about how my mom has helped me to grow has to do with her illness. It is scary for me knowing that my mom has had a brain tumor. It was scary when she went to do her surgeries, and it was scary when she went to do her treatment, her radiation treatment. But my mom reassured me that no matter what, I would be fine. She told me that if she were no longer around, it simply meant that God knew that her work with us was complete, and the next stage of his plan for our lives was about to unfold. That was scary, and I did cry, but mom told me that the crying was because of the love. 
and that somehow made it okay. It made me understand that there's a plan for everyone, that the goal is sure to be attained by all, as is said in our Declaration of Principles. I am a lucky one. My mom always tells us that she's a lucky mom too, to have two beautiful, intelligent young ladies in her life. <laughs> She tells us that we have taught her so much about herself and we truly have given her life purpose. Above all else, mom has helped me to, to grow and understand this. In difficult times, it is okay to cry, eat chocolate cake, and then move on. Thank you. Good morning again, and thank you. Um, first, let, let me echo what something that Zoe said. She talked about um, the, she mentioned the mothers, the parents of those Nigerian girls, and, when, and we, oh, and we joined them with, okay, are you hearing me? Okay, and we joined with them in our thoughts and in our love. Um, we know that where there are, God is, as God is everywhere, equally present. Amen. Okay, so now you have had the fun from um, the Power Talk. You have had the fun from um, Cassandra and um, Noel. All right, so let's get down to some business. All right, real business of strategic parenting. All right. So the, the talk is on parenting strategically with love. Um, my background is, is information technology and project management. And so I am used to thinking in terms of um, presenting concepts using models. Okay? And so this morning, I want us to think about um, one of the common models that we use in um, information processes to represent the human process, the parenting process, okay? And I'm thinking of the model, which is consider four boxes, three boxes, or shall I say these three squares? Just think of three squares. Uh, so the first square, that's the input. The second is the process. And the third is the output. And they are connected. OK? So what goes, so the input is going to influence the process, and the process is going to influence the output. And after the output, you're going to have the feedback, which takes you back to either the input or the, or the process. And that feedback is coming from the information that comes out of the output. All right? Okay, now, you're hearing me and you're following. Okay. All right, good. All right, now. So, we're talking about parenting and relating the process model to the parenting model. All right. Oops, I was told not to take that. Okay. <laughs> and, and from the model, you have what you put in, how it is processed. Okay, what comes out at the end, and then the feedback, i.e. the results, which contains the information that is fed back into the model to start all over again. It, it, it goes on and on. So you're, you're creating a, a, another input after the, that feedback process, and a better input, hopefully. Okay, um, so what is the input? Let me talk about the input to parenting from my perspective, at the start of it, at the start of parenting. Um, so of course, you know, at the start of it, you are sort of, um, there are some things you know. You, you, you don't, you, you're not, you're not, you're not, your, your knowledge is not complete. But you are bringing something to the table. And what am I bringing? I became a parent relatively late in life. And so I had overcome the challenges of growing up. 
I was confident, I was happy, satisfied with myself. So that's, that's the first input I, I, I brought into the thing. I had already discovered the teachings of the science of mind. And so my inner growth, my spiritual awareness, my understanding of the God within, of my place in the world, had started taking shape. As we all know, it is a process. So it starts taking shape and it continues. I had a very supportive family. I have a very supportive family. It's not a big family by Jamaican standards, but um, it, it is the, the, from, from, from the family, I, I get caring. Um, I, I know I'm loved, I'm cherished, I am wanted, and so on. I was quite ready for parenting, actually. I had thought of it adopting prior to my becoming pregnant. So I was quite ready for parenting. Um, I was also looking forward to this wonderful gift, um, this life-changing experience. And for those of us who might want to ask, what were the disadvantages? I didn't know them. I'm sorry. I didn't think that they quite mattered. OK. So we have, um, at, the, at the outset, what is being input into this thing um, is a reasonably self-assured, prepared, supported person looking forward expectantly to what is to come. Of course, there are period, periods of doubt. But with all of this, I had many periods of doubt like everyone else. This is, of course, a very large, big, great, new responsibility. And um, it gives you pause, whoever you are, you know, when, when you are faced with, with, with that responsibility, as you know, it gives you pause. <laughs> OK. Um, for the first time, my choices were, were going to affect um, the life and the well-being and what happened to someone else. It wasn't just a matter of my choices for the best thing for me. Okay. And of course you ask your que the questions, are, are, am I making the right choices? Those, those, those questions come up. Are you still hearing me? Is, is, okay. okay. Um, Okay, so, so I'm saying I'm making choices for another individual who is her own individualized expression of God. I therefore undertook to be always aware of this and to do my best, because your best is what you can do. And the temple had taught me that I could forgive myself if I stumbled, if I made a mistake. All right. I remember actually saying to my young nephew at the time that I am being given, my, I call it a blank slate to write on, to fill with the best experiences, the best thoughts, the best realities that I could conceive. But I soon discovered that the blank slate wasn't that blank after all. <laughs> you know, th there was this, th this little one was coming with, um, an individuality, a personality, uh, some, something innate, something with a slate, actually having things written on, you know, and it, it, a, a unique expression. And so one had to quickly understand that you better hone your negotiating skills. <laughs> okay. And so very soon, the whole input part of it begins to grow. Um, and so because you now have to take in, in, into consideration the, I prefer it this way, I don't like that, uh, you know, and why did you do it this way? I, I don't want to go today, that sort of thing. So you, you, you have to now make sure that you can negotiate and that there is place for that sort of thing to be put back into the input so that the process goes round and round again to produce the kind of output that it can produce. OK. And of course, in my book, there is no place for the old adage that children must be seen and not heard. And as a result, the input has got to keep growing. 
because they are going to be heard if they are allowed to, to be heard. All right now, so let's talk a little bit about the process. If you recall the model, the process is in the middle, okay? And the process is going to take feeding from, from the input and the process is going to feed to the output. All right. Um, the growth and, okay. As parents, we took some significant and considered decision about what we wanted this output to be. Okay, and if truth were to be told, it was what I wanted this output to be. <laughs> um, and I, I, will, I will cite four primary decisions because uh, the process is going to depend on the decisions taken. Um, so, some of the, so the four decisions were, above all, we wanted her to be happy and joy-filled. We wanted her life to be full and involved. We wanted her to grow to see herself as a person of the world, not just an island person, and that is true. I remember saying um, to my nephew, um, I want Anna to grow up and see the world as, as her backyard. So we, we took that decision. We wanted her to have sharpened intellect and confidence in ourselves. So those were the things that we laid out as things we wanted for this wonderful person. Okay, of course, decisions lead to plan and action. And some actions involve doing and some actions involve being. All right, the being actions are a lot more difficult than doing actions. <laughs> um, being is often the best form of demonstration. My being on this path of spiritual growth and enrichment enhanced my abilities to be. My inner joy, my personality, my, my happiness, you know, my, my ability to bring harmony in my life. Uh, and so it enriched my child's experience. And so the, the part about, the decision about wanting her to be happy and joy-filled, that helped greatly in bringing about that aspect of it. Of course, the doing part is simple, relatively easy. And I, I will tell you some of what we planned. It, and of course, it was planned towards the outcome. It included exposure to, to other cultures and ways of life, the careful selection of schools. We were very careful as to what schools we, we selected for our child. Um, concerted engagement with her in our learning activities. Some was sometimes too much for me, but anyway, you know, <laughs> the, 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 the reading of the, the books at night, the, the having to read the literature books because the, the Activities are just too many, and so the child's eyes are closing, and, but there's an exam tomorrow. The, the working with um, some of the specific deliberate actions included music infusion. And we deliberately infused Anna in music because we thought it would have been good for her mental development. We were told by our teacher that she was good at it. And we thought it would develop an awareness of excellence. Um, we sent her to study overseas at a particular age because we wanted that exposure to other cultures and so on. So it, it, it really was deliberate. I'm not sure if you're going to be as deliberate as we were. But <laughs> um, remember that you, 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 the decisions that you take, just think about the decision that I, I talked of before and the actions or the doing relating back to those decisions. Okay, so the last box is the outcome, the output. So what is the output? Um, of course, output takes place continuously, you know, because the information goes out from the output, it comes around, it feeds back, and the output go, takes place continuously. And you recall that we said that it produces information, I'm repeating, as feedback to create change, correction, and growth, and so on. 
if we like to disrupt production process, the feedback might indicate change to temperature, to how much water you want to put in, and so on, in order to change the, the, the product at the end. In the human process, feedback may, may indicate an intervention by Reverend John. It may indicate a review of one's own attitude, a need for negotiation further, a need to let go and let God. Some use, yeah, Zara said that. Okay. And of course, many, many more things. The important thing is to recognize that that you need to act on that, to recognize that there is feedback and that it means that some action needs to be taken. Okay, remember that is the continuous process I have written down here, a refinement process, a growth process. And so it keeps going round and round. Okay, um, and so what we have at the end of that is Anna. <laughs> 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 okay, uh, on, on, on the matter of outcome, I just want to share with you some of the fun things and some of the great things that have come out of my experience. It has been a great experience and an enjoyable one. Um, I went back into her archives while I was preparing this to pick up some of the things that she did and wrote. And th I mean, there, there are so many, I just picked up a few of them. And I'll read some of them to you because you know, the, and remembering that part of it was the development of the intellect, the, the, the confidence to be able to, to, to think that you can do what you want to do and so on. Okay, Anna at age 10. Make a sentence with the word artificial. Anna's sentence. If I had known that they invented artificial teeth, I would have stopped brushing a long time ago. <laughs> Okay. Make a sentence with the word unique. I am unique. I am 100% pure. I am me, and that is all I'll ever be. Make a sentence with the word adequate. No, no, no. My share is quite adequate. I don't want to overdo myself. <laughs> of course, this probably has come from her mother, always talk about her diet, and, and she, was, she, she used to be quite plump. <laughs> All right, now, and now read a little story that, that, that she wrote. It's called Boots. Boots. On a walk a long time ago in the deep, dark forest, the animals came upon a man's boots. But these were not normal boots. One foot was the length of the Mississippi and the height of the Eiffel Tower. Peter Peter John the bunny said, look how elegant and huge this boot looks. It is elegantly laced and, it is, and its leather could last for a lifetime. I must agree, tweeted Lodi the robin. This boot could be a historical site and could stay standing until the 30th century. No one had ever seen the back of the boots because of its enormity. If you approached, it would retreat. The legend, the legend is that if you go close enough, you would hear the sound of a whip, said Peter John, the bunny. Some says it's an alien, and others say Bigfoot is looking for his shoes, <laughs> said May the doe. But how do you account for the whipping sound? Whip, said Lodi the robin. I think it is the home of the old lady in the shoe who had so many children she didn't know what to do. She gave them some broth without any bread, then whipped them all soundly and sent them to bed. Said the old wise owl, I may be wrong, I may be right, but this mystery is unsolved to this very night. The end. <laughs> I have great fun, I've had great fun with this child. Fast forward to today, 
and the outcome is a beautiful, talented, confident, accomplished citizen of the world. I thank you, my Temple family, for your contribution and your involvement in the life of Anna and in my life. Thank you very much. Thank you.